by request. This is the Perfect Embroidery Pro Embroidery Software by Designs and Machine Embroidery or Dime. By request, let's get to it. Okay, so I've been snooping around in this software and I really like it. Now, I only have the demo version, so I am missing some things that you might have on your software. From what I understand, I have the My Lace Maker that you'd be able to incorporate it in here and switch back and forth. You can't do that in the demo version. So if I don't have something or if I can't use something, that's because it's the demo version. So the first thing I do when I get software is I set up things the way I like them. So the first thing you want to do is go to general options right here. And this is where you can set up quite a few things, inches or metric, default style, so what it's going to default to, what it's going to start to. I'm just going to leave mine on normal. Uh, Floriani thread, because uh, I like it. <laughs> That's fine. Auto save. I love that. I love that auto save every minute and you can export all your settings and save them so you can use them again so that's handy uh so machine activate trim okay that's good remove stitches shorter than i think that's really good combine jumps when reading yep frame out so if you don't know what a frame out is that's when you're doing applique the hoop on the machine will come out so it's much easier to reach to do applique. So I like that, that's fine. Set up your grid, which is really nice. I'm gonna set mine up one inch by one inch. Um, and I'm not gonna put on snap to grid. These are really important. You can start when you left click as a curve point or uh, let's see, Bezier points, which are really cool. We can work on that if you guys don't know how to work with them, they're really nice. Or freehand, so I'm gonna leave it at simple draw and I'm gonna leave it at straight point. So complex fill, standard, we'll just leave it at standard. Default angle, 45 or zero. I'm just gonna leave it, I think it's fine. Uh, use single line. Uh, it's just how it shows up differently. I would leave it. I would just leave it standard. Um, auto backdrop panning. No. Highlight selection. I have changed this to pink because I like it and I'm used to it. So that means when you've clicked on something and it is selected, it'll be that color. I like it. Uh, on screen text typing. Show tooltip in input mode. Yes. Increase double and bean run thickness in realistic view. I'm going to put that on because I like that. I think that gives you a better, you know, effect of what you can see. Auto close zoom and pan tools. I'm not really worried about that. Auto based. Um, I'm going to leave it on. This is something I rarely use, but it could be handy. Both of my machines, you can do it automatically. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. Okay, let's start going through everything. In the next video, we are going to be able to do a little bit of work. I'm going to encourage everyone to comment and like on this video. Uh, hopefully it gets enough attention and enough people watching so I can do more and maybe eventually get a full copy of the software. We'll see how that goes, but uh, pass it around to anyone that you know and help get the momentum going on this software because I really like using it. Even though I can't stitch anything out, I really, really like the software. Okay, so let's start up here. So, okay, let's do this. Control N. Um, if you don't know, I very rarely use keyboard shortcuts because I have a separate keyboard that is just for shortcuts. And it happens that these ones are mostly the same as what I've been using. So that's why I don't call out shortcuts all the time because I am using my other keyboard. So, okay, let's do a new one. Oh, if you wanted to change the background, it is right over here. Set background color. It comes in as white, but I've changed it to gray because I just find it a lot easier to, to see. 
Okay, I can't save. Control S is the shortcut because I'm only using a demo version. Uh, print, I'm not really sure if I can print, but you want to print out your template so it's important. Slow redraw, Control R, it shows you how it's going to stitch out. And I think it's really important to just take a quick glance at it um, before you stitch your design. It really helps you catch everything. Now these are uh, cut copy control c control v i think everyone knows those i don't use the cut too often but control c and control v it, it's really important we use it all the time so undo control z that's one i use a whole lot and i have that programmed into my shortcut keyboard the zoom 200 percent how about I'm going to leave it at one to one because that it just makes it a little bit easier to see the sizes start or stop show or hide the start and stop points. We'll turn that on and off and I'll show you what that does. This right here gets you to some tutorials really handy. I checked them out. Um, info about the program. We know it's only demo version. So manual and this is run. So you click on that. And you're going to make a run like this. We're going to play around with it. And you can either right click or press enter. I will probably press enter because that's my habit. And then we go here and we have a run. Let's put it on 3D because I like it's easier for you guys to see. And uh, I often work in 3D because I like how it looks. You can see everything. So once you select it, and remember I did pink, so you can see that it's selected. It also has a bounding box around it. This X enables you to move it up and down and I like how it eliminates the bounding box so you can really see what you're doing. So let's select it again. Now these are all adjustment things. See how it's changing? Let's see. It's skewing. I really like that. I think that's handy. This of course just pulls it up, pulls it down, and then this one makes it bigger on one corner. So basic stuff there, super handy. Now, when you have something selected, look over here, and this is where you can change everything. And there can be lots of tabs over here, just depending on what stitch type you're picking. So you can just click on the, the tabs. The fabric is, it doesn't apply for a run stitch, but if you're doing any other kinds of stitches, you can change the fabric type and it is going to set up your underlay and pull compensation accordingly. Now let's see color one. This is just a little bit of information. And this is one of my favorite ones that I pay a lot of attention to width width and height so you can see the size of it sometimes it can be a little deceiving if you're zoomed in that you think you're doing something small and it's actually quite big so keep an eye on that one so that's running stitch pretty basic um, other than using these the squares and the diamonds if you want to adjust it you the shortcut is f9 and it's called shape and you can adjust the nodes just move them around and it's going to restyle it for you. I like how the new line is pink and they just leave it so you can really see what you're doing there. And let's see if we right click, you can add a point, you can delete a point, uh, you can also use the delete key. Um, you can change it. This is what I like really. Split line, close line, add an outline, obviously not for running stitches, but we can move that to smooth and these are bezier handles which you may find a little frustrating but once you get the hang of them it it's really good because look you have so much more control over your curve it doesn't have to be just a curve we can make a zigzag now we hit enter and there we go so we have different points in there now this key is a satin stitch key and you see it comes in here satin you have a whole bunch of choices but we will work with those after and this is for satin stitches with a varied width on it so for this one it goes in order like this one two three four then right click 
and you get a dotted line again and then this one like this and enter to finish now these are really long satin stitches they split and everything but you can see how it works we could easily make this a little bit smaller so it looks better there you go it's still a bit wide but there you go so that's how you make satin stitch blocks with varying width now this one is classic satin which is really nice to use and it goes in this manner and you see it's um from side to side or up to down now you can hold down the control key and left click and you can get curves but you see the rhythm that it's in make sure your angle lines are good look at how beautiful that is there we go and keep going and once you do this one you can hit enter or right click now that satin stitches again quite large but we can easily do this and change it click apply there we go isn't that pretty now it's nice the way the curves go around it i i love it so that is a classic satin stitch the next up is the steel stitch or style stitch however you say it and this is just your traditional straight from a straight line satin stitch outline sort of thing um, easy to do just click it exactly like you would do a uh, running stitch it's just going to be thicker keep in mind you don't want satin stitch too big or you don't want satin stitches too small now when you have this selected you can right click and there's quite a few things you can do in this right click menu now look you can convert this line to different things and i i really like that puffy stitch tackle twill bead you can switch it to artwork you can go to utility create outline connect simplify remove overlaps remember that where that one is we'll be using that a lot create nap blocker i will show you what that is in a few minutes and change style so um and you can group as well so there's lots to do when you right click on any object that you create so complex fill now this complex fill it's just basic you can do a whole lot with it now i'm just left clicking and right clicking to close you don't have to match it up or anything like that detail work you want satin stuff really cool detail work this is the one you want to use really cool because it uses angles now you can change the angle on this one see it's right here now i just sorry i just clicked into the i call it node mode so i probably will it's the shape tool and right here you see how my cursor turned to a dot that's how i i know i'm on it and you change the angle and the stitches are going to change so i can press enter and there they change if i don't like that i'll just move it here and you can see it drags along there we go and you can see your start point and you can see your stop point and when you hover over it look at your cursor so you're never going to pick up the wrong thing because you know what it is because of the cursor so i'm going to move it over here just for fun i don't know what the shape is but it's nice to tommy stitches now of course we can go in and modify everything you have patterned stitches which uh can be really nice hit apply there we go isn't that pretty if you had something large to fill in if you don't want to use applique something like this would be great click on it again and we can see our options so you can change the density most of the time leave it alone um, but you can change it stitch length is pretty much set up again you can change it you can make the stitch length longer or shorter just keep it within what your machine can do now this is the underlay so you can change the underlay and it's really nice because it gives you a picture right here of what you're clicking on so it sure makes it easy to select it um, push pull compensation is all set up really handy so percentage none or absolute that's easy just generally leave it there's a way of changing it so connection chiseled gradient none Ooh, we can play with gradients let's do a class on gradients let me know in the comments if you want to do that 
um, oh, this is color blending. Yeah, that'll be the third class. Let me know if you want to do that. Uh, colors and start command, just leave most of that. And then of course this one is your transform. So it tells us what size it is and position and you can flip and you can rotate it. So I'm going to delete it, of course, because there we go. We want a clean slate to work on. All right, now this is, remember there's a little arrow here. I'm going to zoom right in so you can see it. And it's a drop down menu. They're kind of hidden, but you got to remember that they're there. I love the little symbols here. So we can do applique, puffy stitch, or tackle twill. Tackle twill is a commercial applique, and you've probably seen it on the backs of jerseys and stuff like that. It's the same as regular applique, except for it does a bit of an offset zigzag stitch. I think it just makes it faster, but it gives it a certain look, so we can play around with that. Right here, we can make a shape perfectly, and then we can convert it so rounded corners that one's really nice and then right click and then we're going to convert it to applique dun, 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 dun. then it's done now you have choices here placement line tack down line uh change colors i want on so it will stop so i can change colors for the you know placement line and then you put your fabric down and then you trim it so we want the machines to stop so make sure you have that part clicked on and click apply I, i'm not remembering to click apply yet i'm working on it though i'm working on it so again you have a choice you can do e-stitch you can do motif I really thought that was awesome. I've been playing around with it. I wish I could stitch it out because I thought that was really cool. I've never seen that as an option for applique and symbols. That's one of the things I really like are the symbols. But anyways, we'll go over that. Basic applique, this is what you got. That is cool. Now let's go to puffy stitch, which is really neat as well that it's all digitized for you. Let's make a shape like this. How about a bow tie? There we go. Right click to finish and you have everything. So puffy stitch, you would put foam underneath these areas. It works really well for lettering, but you can use it for other things. So again, you have all your choices right here. There's lots to do. So let's see, can we convert convert to tackle twill. So there we go. That is basically the difference between regular applique and tackle twill. So it will just put a zigzag on it. So let's do a placement line and hit apply and then you can see it. So the tackle twill just kind of catches on the outside. It's a nice look. It's really nice. Tack down command stop. Yup. So we can do a tack down line too, so which is exactly the same. So that's cool, those, that's those keys. This is just basic stuff that we need to know. Cross stitch, so it's the same sort of thing. You can just make a path and make it cross stitch when you hit enter. Really nicely done. Uh, I like it, I like it. So, okay, let's, what's next? artwork so input artwork we're not going to do that right now but you can make your own artwork so the thing with artwork that you have to remember i'm going to show you i'm going i'm left clicking and dragging you can hit control to constrain it so it's not you know misshapen like that so you pull it out and you right click and if you look that it's just artwork, there are no stitches on this. So it's just a line. There's nothing that's going to stitch out. Think of it as a template. And then you need to right click, convert to run, say example. Now you have stitches. Now something will stitch out. So just remember that about the artwork. So the next thing is symbols. I think symbols are really cool. We'll go to select and look at all these. In the manual, they use the ant on a line and I really thought that was cute. There's a bee. There's so many of them. 
I thought it was fantastic. The uh, You can be so creative with this. How about we'll get uh, lips and then we're going to left click and it goes down. Let's go here and select it. We're going to make the lips a little bit bigger. They're all completely resizable. Keeping in mind that you don't want your satin stitches too long. I'm good on this. Now, if you look over here, there are a whole bunch of options. You could color blend this, which would look really cool. General, just edges. I think the symbols are really cute. Now this is a magic wand. We're going to do that in the next video. The difference between the magic wand and the auto digitizing wizard. We're going to go over that. So right here, let's go. And these are beads. Now I think they look amazing. I think this is really cool to be able to add these in to, to see the bling that you're going to use. I think it's so much fun. So we will do that another time as well, but we know it's there and we'll be able to use it. See how the beads work? I'll just show you quickly. Every node that you place down in between, you get the beads. And look at this. Let's zoom right in here. Look how it does it. I think that's really neat. Okay, this one's really cool too. Buttonholes. Look at, they have built-in buttonholes. I checked out this one. Bring it in, left click, there it is. Isn't that gorgeous? I, I really like it. I thought, yeah, that sure makes it easy. So button your lips. <laughs> button your lips. All right. <laughs> All right. So text, there is so much to do with the text tool. Um, we can talk about it if you guys are interested. I love fonts and I love monogram fonts. The one thing I do want to show you is I clicked on the text tool and I just clicked and you can type. Now these are built-in fonts and there's a difference with them. Let's see. These with the green M are specific monogram fonts. You can use them anywhere, but they're specifically made for monogram fonts. These ones with the yellow M are micro fonts, and I have them in another software, and they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, you have to use different thread and a different needle, but they actually really work. You can go as small as three millimeters on a few of them. So just to keep in mind what these are, you can change the height, you can change the spacing, um, you can do true type font and all the fonts in my computer right here comes in a pop-up. So you can use a true type font and that'll work as well. So there's lots to do and lots to change on it. Optimize colors. I love that. So you can change the order. You can change the type. We are going to go through it um, on another video if you guys want. And there's so many things you can do with it. It's fantastic. Monogramming the same thing. We'll do both of those in one video and it'll be awesome. Now this here, it looks like the same T, um, but it's a catalog. Now I don't have all of the text catalog and that's probably because I have a demo, but I have it right here. So we can just take a quick look through. This is the manual and I thought, oh, okay, that's nice. Okay. Little symbols. That's awesome. I really like those. Um, I really like this as well. I'd love to see one of those stitch out. Maybe someone can stitch it out for me. Um, more symbols, flowers and everything, crowns. These are split designs, which is great. These are just simply cute space letters. This is really nice. Santa, Father Christmas there. Uh, this, yes, wow. I, I am interested in seeing that one. I love lettering like that. more symbols. These ones I have been looking for forever. This is one of my favorite things that I've been working with and working on are these uh, intertwined monograms. And I think it's really awesome that they have them in here. This is my favorite thing to do in fonts. I think you can make them so pretty and they have a ton of those. So I think that is a fantastic catalog. 
So it's just uh, ideas. Look at this motif shapes, quite a few in there that you can work with to make your own motifs. That is another video. Motifs are really fun. Applique shapes. I look through these and I'm seriously impressed. Like these two bones, how cute is that? Butterfly, it just goes on and you just pull them out and then you can make your own applique and you can show your fabric on it. So it's super handy. So, okay, let's keep moving on. Auto digitizing, I'm not too big on auto digitizing. I am interested in seeing how this program stitches it out. I played around with it and it looks pretty good. So split design, that's how you can split a design uh, for smaller hoops so it's really easy to do and we have quite a few more tools here so optimize sequence it's just going to put everything or in order so it's you know optimized for you this one is optimize entry and exit which is really important to do so it'll help you reduce your jump stitches auto based i don't use that very often because both of my machines have it and i still don't use it on the machines but if you like basting then it's right here this one is placement marks which is super handy if you are doing endless borders which is awesome so uh duplicate that's easy to do repeat i really like that one as well these are fun this is right here is fun so carousel put everything on a circle you just click on it look how cute that is already so this is the width of the circle and you can change it and you got to hit apply of course now i put them really close but still that kind of makes a whole new design I could play with circle repeat forever. Isn't that cute? Let's do it. And it's done right there. Isn't that cute? I like it. So it's a quick and easy way to create new designs. I think it's awesome. So select it again. But we have place, we have reflect, and we have scatter. So I'm going to show you guys the scatter one because it is actually kind of fun. So control Z to step back twice. So, and I'm going to delete this guy. Oh, and I'll delete the buttonhole. All right. So we've got our lips again. I could make them a little bit smaller. There we go. So let's go up here, little arrow again, twirl down, and it is scatter. And this is fantastic. I love this. I could probably play with it all day. So minimum size, maximum size minimum distance in between auto rotate and you can have it auto resequence by color so you don't have a whole bunch of ju jump stitches now if you want to try some different ones just keep pressing apply and you can see there's different sizes there's different everything i'm thinking you know halloween bats and different things like that to do random or christmas tree decorations to make a, a pattern. I think it's awesome. It's just random and cool. Oh, I like that one. Let's do that one. But isn't that awesome? I think that is fantastic and fun. Now, all these tools here, we will be using them in our uh, classes because they are kind of shortcut tools and they're really handy. So flip horizontal and just reverses it. You can't really tell on this one. Click it again to put it back. Flip vertical, so up and down, um, which is great. Rotate, I think it's neat that you can just rotate it once and it goes, uh, I think, 15 degrees. Great. Now, left align. All, people get confused with these ones, so maybe I need to do a whole video on it um, to help you guys with it because they are really cool tools that you should be using. So we're going to go back to our lip symbol again, and we are going to, you can do the shortcuts, copy, and then paste. And there we go. We've got a couple right here. Let's see if that'll work. So select, left click, drag out, select both of them. That's uh, the only way it'll work. You obviously have to have two. 
and then this one will left align the pass. So let's click on that. That is way faster than doing it any other way. Control Z. So it lines up the ends of each on the left. So Control Z. Let's do this one. Right align. Yep, you guessed it. Let's do another one. Top align. Yep. How to make it perfectly line up. I love this amount of precision. And then bottom align. I use these a lot. This one is a little different. You click on it, it's going to align it through the middle. So super handy again. This one is vertical center align there, and it's lining up right through the middle of it. Control Z again and center align, center the pass. And this is the one that people use a lot and it, it put one over the other because it's center aligned it. It would be really handy if you had maybe some fill stitches here. You, you could do the fill stitches and then just align them. So remember to use these tools. They are absolutely fantastic. So let's delete this. Let's go to our manual line and let's just stitch a line here and then uh, right click and then we're going to copy and paste this. So control C, control V, 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 V. All right, so we've got a few of them sitting there. Now, if I want these even, I'm just gonna spread them out here in a random form, just to show you guys this tool. Is that it? No, one more. Uh, oh, no, that was it. All right, so I'm gonna select them all and this is where it'll come in handy. So watch when I click what it does. Perfectly even, perfectly even. Just with one click, it would take a grid and guidelines and everything like that to set it up. This is group. So if you have, let's go back, uh, control Z. If you have two or more, it doesn't matter how many, and you can add to it. So two or more objects, you can group them and they stay together. So it's not merging them together at any time. It's just keeping them together. It's like putting them in a bag. You can just pick up the bag and move both of them at the same time. So that's what grouping is. People make a mistake on that a lot and they think it's merging, but you can ungroup them, deselect both, and you can move them singly. So it's just uh, to make things easier, to keep things together. When you get up into complicated designs, it'll it'll make a big difference. So, okay, that's awesome. Now this one is move to front. So what it means is on your list there, we want it to move it to, um, okay, the front is the bottom and the back. So it's the back of the order, what is gonna stitch out first. So with one click, we can move that and it stitches first. So it's the back of the list, the front of the list is on this side. Really handy, I like it. And this one is combine and you can combine selected paths. So if we go like this and then we go like that and then we can combine them into one. There you go. So that is basically a merge. Now this one is kind of handy, break apart. Let's break it apart. There we go, all broken apart. That works out really well. You can use that for lettering. You can use that for applique. There are a lot of things to use it on. Okay, hopefully you guys are still following along and in enjoying this beginner embroidery here. Um, I wanted to show you, I always keep the sequence up because I like to know the order of everything. You can see a bigger version of what it is. I find that quite handy as well. But if you go here, you can access your designs to just click and drag in. You can add effects. Now I don't have anything filled, but these are just quick effects for the fill. You can make an outline. You can, you know, make fancy fills and play around with it with the satin and everything. And then Navigator will just give you an overview of your workspace because sometimes you get really big designs 
and you know you can get lost in it so let's go over this i wanted to point out that these are all drop down menus that you can use these symbols are all up here so if for some reason you can't find it if you're missing you know the little arrow drop down thing you can figure it out from here tools edit file so okay let's talk about this one so this is oh lasso this is our node mode f9 um super handy you should use that a lot this is a slice tool which is not available until you select it and it's not available for run stitches i think it's mostly for artwork which is fine stitch tool which is kind of cool look you can grab one stitch let's zoom in there so we can see this a little bit better you can select one stitch and move it so it's handy if you have to make you know detailed adjustments on it i think that's super handy so just another way of selecting it you can also use the lasso and that didn't work because i lift it up okay so you can see that my pointer changes so you can see that it's a lasso and i'm just left clicking and dragging it out and you can see it's selected more than one stitch at a time so handy if you're having trouble selecting things that's the way to do it so zoom pan which means move around like this the whole thing it just pans the desktop up or down or any direction that you want i think this looks like a comb i laugh at it all the time but it's the ruler tool i always keep that up because it's great for reference now grid um usually if you have your grid up it really helps a lot i don't always but it really helps for lining up things. It also rem reminds you um, visually of how big you're working in because I set up my grid to be one inch by one inch. So if you're really zoomed in and you forget that you know this, is r this area right here is really small. So it kind of helps with you know setting up the sizes and everything. 3D, you can turn it on or off. I like it on. Show or hide stitches, you're mostly going to leave that on. This one is stitch ends, show or hide stitch ends. So it just really depends on what you want to see. Now we can't see too much on this one because I don't have anything going. Um, commands, I like this one. You can see this is a color change and there's no trims but that's when it would show up oh yeah hooping we should hoop everything we're doing right suggest i love this suggest and there we go and now we have a hoop i most of the time work without the hoop up but it is again a great reference for you so if you want it up leave it up and then here auto fit that's really handy too it it'll move everything to center and fit it in so there's lots more in this software i'm really excited i really like how easy it is to use i love the symbols i think that's really awesome i love the fonts and the catalogs I, again i wish i had some more of the um text designs but it's awesome i find this software very useful and easy to use it does a lot of things and i think we're going to have a whole lot of fun working out some projects and doing things with this so make sure you comment and make sure everyone shows interest so we can keep going on and uh, make more videos so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel i hope you guys like this video and i'll see you guys in the next video bye